Ryan's got a double! There he is. Every angler has a favorite time of the year to chase fish with a fly. Whether it be during the blossoming spring, during the green of summer, the colors of autumn, or during the cleansing white of winter. It merely offers a backdrop to a pursuit that has attached itself to the soul of a fly fisherman. Rod, reel, fly, and fish. Oh, there's a big fish. Oh, big fish. Here we go. Big fish. <laughs> Under that log, behind that rock, or deep in the dark blue could lie the fish of a lifetime. It's in that helpless hope that the angler will march from year to year through a lifetime, hoping the next cast connects dreams and a fish legend. Welcome to Seasons on the Fly. Oh, let's go. <laughs> Wow, big fish. Welcome to Seasons on the Fly. I'm Greg Heister, and welcome back to the Sea of Cortez. In this episode, we chase one of the most elusive, but yet most highly sought after fish in saltwater fly fishing today. And wow, are these guys frustrating, as you're about to find out. It's called the rooster fish. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Seasons on the Fly, and welcome back to La Paz, Mexico. Don Poffinroth, a co-owner of Dry Fly Distilling, is chasing his first career rooster fish, or in Spanish, the Pez Gallo. The pursuit doesn't take long. So I looked it up and kind of studied it a little bit, and, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really cool fish. However, this fish is small, but for Don, the skunk is off. Oh, look at that comb. And the rooster is in the boat. I think the coolest thing about rooster fish fishing, uh, at least from my perspective, and I'm a die-hard dry fly guy, is that this is a very visual fishing experience. And to see that predatory nature of multiple fish coming in on your fly is an amazing thing. For fly fishermen, it's one of the most sought after fish that's available in salt water. Very unique, they're difficult to catch, but we have them in pretty good abundance here in La Paz. And it may be a size challenged fish, but this show will be a reminder to enjoy the journey. Okay, you want me to show you how to do it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. There may be no more finicky, stubborn, and outright miserable creature to try and get to eat your fly. Roosterfish definitely is very unique. Um, they, they are very difficult, yet there are times when we find that they are catchable. Get them, boys! Get them! He just boiled on my fly. And an awful lot of times that they show curiosity and, and, and you think that you've got a fish that's interested, we've come to understand that, that a lot of those fish, you, you're just not going to catch them. They, 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 they show curiosity and then they back off. And uh, we've kind of gotten to where we recognize fish that are really at that pinnacle of feeding activity for the day. And that's, and that's when a lot of techniques work and, and, and all. But a lot of the rest of the time, they're, they're a tough customer. It's kind of like the posh fish right now in, in fly fishing, really. Uh, there's all kinds of information out there. It's, it's a fish that's got all of this mystique now. It hunts, and they're very difficult to catch on a fly. But when you do, it's ext extremely memorable. There's photographs. You'll find some video on the internet. But, and some television that's been done. But it, it is a really cool fish, and we had, to come, we had to come down and focus on the rooster fish. And to simply watch this fish eat, and to see it chase down food, and use that comb to herd, and to school bait, is magical. They are so keyed in to a certain type of feeding um, pattern that in certain species, we find them that they're more selective about the species that they eat at any given time, 
And if your presentation does not behave in the water like their prey species, they don't want it. Keep going, keep going. All right. Yeah, you got them done. All right, that's the way it's done. All right, guys. Way to go, Don. Don Poffenroth loves to fish. He'd prefer throwing a dry fly. He and his partner, Kent Fleischman, named their company after the hackle floating bug, but to catch a rooster, it's a cast and strip maneuver, a bait fish pattern that swims and dives for its life. Few get away from these hunters. Hey, Heister, that's pretty cool. You gotta try this. Yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, look at the colors in the comb. Nope. A little more. Whoa. You never see that happen with trout or salmon or steelhead, that, that predatory hunting kind of a, a, a method that they feed on, and, and just watching that was amazing. Keep in mind, this is Don's first attempt at trying to catch a rooster fish. And if you're keeping score at home, that's Don too, the host of the show, Zero. Oh, he wants to go. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> that was good. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. All right. When Seasons on the Fly continues, oh! Oh! the roosters continue to raid and maraud. The route continues, and the city of peace. Greg Heister here. Find out the truth about chronic Lyme disease. Go to seasonsonthefly.com. Seasons on the Fly brought to you by Loop. Join the Loop Army and help take North America by storm. And by the Restigouche River Lodge. Come fish the land of the giants. The rooster fish is truly a unique fish. There he, there he is. It's exotic. At one time, it was thought to be a part of the Jack family, closely related to the Jack Crevel. But it was discovered that its air bladder extended from its stomach to its earlobes. So today, science has classified it in its own family and genus. Oh. Oh. And when you see that comb come up, I mean, it's so exciting. It's great to catch one, but it seems like it's just as exciting to see these fish in the way that they live in, in this water. Here it, comes, here it comes, here it comes. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that is a nice fish. There's so many, so many different species of fish in the water, and, and uh, when bait would crack upon the surface and we could see multiple varieties of fish feeding, uh, yeah, that's a pretty spectacular thing to see. Oh, oh. The Rooster Fish Foundation has been created to promote this fish and to help to study it. They tag fish, and in the years to come, more will be known about this fish called Pez Gallo. The people here in Mexico are interested in getting research on the roosters. There is no research done on these fish. So I want to be a part of that. All of us as anglers want to be a part of that. Point is, they don't know much. It migrates, it schools up, but where they go and for how long is still unknown making this fish a mystery. But when that comb comes up and the feed is on, this is one of the most explosive, stimulating fish to catch for any fisherman. When they decide to eat, they are incredibly aggressive and you get that whole big display of, of uh, the, you know, the comb coming up out of the water and uh, when they take it, it is, I mean, it is big. Oh, I got him! All right, all right, all right, all right. I got him! Oh, ho, ho, ho. And finally, it happens. The boat is surrounded by roosters eating and killing, and one has mercy and chooses my fly. Oh! Nice. That's incredible. Don Poffenroth, this is amazing. Look at these fish down here. Yeah, okay, this one's gonna get it. Come on, turn right oh, here. You got it. You got it. Got it. We got a double. I knew I saw those turn. We got a double, Don. Wow, that was epic. What are talking about, Greg Heister? That was epic, Don Poffenroth. El Dondo. <laughs> Double. We got double rooster fish on. Oh, what an epic fight, Mr. Rooster. Hey, Mike, what time is it? 
It is rooster time. Presentation's got to be perfect. Speed of the fly's got to be perfect. The fly has to ride in the water perfectly. And it's the timing of the presentation. It's got to be right there at the right moment to have any sort of chance to catch these fish. You don't catch rooster fish. This is what I've learned this week. You don't catch rooster fish by accident. Yeah, double any time is cool, let alone on rooster fish. And I had no idea what to expect. I, I expected it to be, I guess I expected it to be as difficult as it was. Yeah, we did a little dance in there as we uh, kind of went front to back and back to front. And I think we both uh, wrapped the tips of our rods a couple of times, but we got it done. Hey, Don. Yeah, Greg. Nice effort out of you. Thanks, buddy. Here, this yeah. whole time, I just thought you were like a cutthroat fisherman. Don and I had a little chatter going back and forth on the boat, you know, which is really cool, and Don's great to fish with. Oh, oh my gosh. That's a big <laughs> fish. <laughs> big Don. Get down on wow, look at that yeah, fish, man. Donald. Oh, I'd absolutely come back. And not only would I come back, I would suggest anyone else who likes to, to uh, you know, cast to that type of a fish or that type of a scenario to do it. I, I think it's a once in a lifetime kind of place and there's some things that happen here that probably don't happen anywhere else. And he got his in and I swear to this day that my fish was bigger. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. <laughs> Way to go, right. Don Poppenroy. In fact, it was a lot bigger and I couldn't wait to get that fish in to prove it to him. Oh, no. Did you just break up? Oh, oh, oh came unbuttoned. Or a hole. That's part of it. Oh, my God. I still love oh me, my god. <laughs> I fought that rooster fish for over 30 minutes. It went one way, it went the other way, and the longer you keep those fish on, you know, those are big hooks we're using, and I think it starts to wear a little hole, oh, and if no. they turn the right way at the right moment, the hook can come out, and we all worked hard to get heist of the fish. If you're still keeping score at home, that's Don 3, host of the show, Zero. When Seasons on the Fly continues, the drought ends, and it's a fish of a lifetime. When Seasons on the Fly continues. Hi there. Go to SeasonsOnTheFly.com and support our sponsors. Without them, this show is impossible. Find their logo, click on it, go to their website and buy their product. Let them know that you learned about them through our show. And thank you for watching Seasons on the Fly. Seasons on the Fly brought to you by Whitetail Country Sports World, where the great outdoors is in. And by La Paz, Mexico, Peace and abundance on the Sea of Cortez. Seasons on the Fly brought to you by the Baja Pirates. Here's your chance to fish the aquarium of the world. And by SeasonsOnTheFly.com. Don't let the experience end when the show does. They are beautiful fish to watch. They are strong fighters. They are very hard to catch. Even live bait, fly fishing, they are very hard to catch fish. So that's make the catching of a rooster or the fishing of a rooster so exciting for everybody. La Paz, Mexico has many great species of fish to chase in the Sea of Cortez. The rooster fish has become important in the fly world. The Sea of Cortez is about the northernmost reach for the rooster, a reach that extends south to Guatemala. The reality of it is the rooster is a lot more elusive than that, and it's a lot more elusive than most people give it credit for. It takes a concerted effort to catch a rooster on bait, and it takes even a more concerted effort to catch that rooster on a fly. Most of these fish are caught within a quarter mile of a beach, and because of that, many anglers choose to catch roosters from the beach but having a boat will certainly give you more opportunities and this angler needed as many as he could get. And Don, by the way, has left for home. Down here in the Sea of Cortez, uh, we have two types of fish, the ones that are eating or the ones that are being eaten. These fish are so finicky that you're constantly checking your fly. Okay, not just the color or the size, but how it swims. If you notice, I'm constantly putting the fly down in the water to make sure that there's enough hair the way that fly has been built to make sure that 
it's even on both sides because if there's a little bit more on the left, it's going to swim like this because of the weight and those roosters are not going to like it. When they come in and reject, 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 reject. A slow trolling lure brings a rooster in and one cast with a 10 inch mullet pattern and a few hard strips and off came the rooster and he slams the fly. Here he comes, here he comes. Oh, he got it, he ate it, he ate it. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that fish darted off that teaser and came right at my fly and there was no doubt about it. He grabbed and went and it was a strip set because I'm double handing the strip. You don't even have the rod in your hand and so you're feeling the fish when you do like that and Man, it's, it's spectacular. It's magical. Uh, yeah! Roosters don't jump, but they go, and they pull as hard as any fish its size. The current IGFA record was caught near La Paz, a rooster weighing 114 pounds. But when you get that fish to eat it, it's just as magical as your, your 998th cast swinging a fly up on the Bulkley River in British Columbia and having that 25 pound steelhead eat it and take it. It's crazy cool. Uh, I love the rooster fish. Okay, fish out. <laughs> we got one. We got, a, we got a beautiful one. After four days of fishing, we uh, seeing it every day, chasing the bait, chasing the flies. Finally, we tried something different and, and we got it. You know you did probably 8,000 casts this week. I know, <laughs> I, I, know, I feel for you, um, but the stripping, you didn't give up. And that fish at that one time was just, it was hungry and it took it. And the look on your face when you turned around, when, that, when you finally got that nice strip set on that rod, and you turned around and looked at everyone and you were screaming and to me as a guide, that's what, I, that, that's what my job is all about, is making memories for our fly fishermen. Those are the things that I never forget. The comb, or the dorsal fin, has seven spines. It's the look of this fish that sets it apart from others. It's exotic. It's as keen a fish as an angler can pursue. Combine its size, the way it eats, and its unique look, and the rooster fish is unforgettable. Sardinia were gone. There were no fish around eating. I have a mullet fly on, and that's what that fish ate after it got fired up by the teaser. Who can explain it? I can't explain it. There he goes. Come on, swim. There he goes, kick. But again, it's, we had to go through the fly box and just keep trading, looking, searching, trying, and it all paid off. All of us at Barha Pirates want to congratulate you on your first successful rooster fish awesome and everyone from the rooster foundation tagged and released yes so with the tagging program now this is something that we've started there okay. have only been two three of these put out now we're presenting these to every fly angler okay that retrieves and then we tag and successfully release That's awesome oh Get yourself your custom ceramic rooster pin Compliments that's very Empire. nice Congratulations. Thank you for all your help and your, and your work, Richard. And Pedro! That's right. We don't... And the skunk is off. And Seasons on the Fly continues after this. Seasons on the Fly brought to you by Dry Fly, handcrafted spirits made in the Pacific Northwest. And by Wild Alaska Sport Fishing and Cruises. Come find the real Alaska. <laughs> Seasons on the Fly brought to you by GoPro. Be a hero. The city of La Paz and the Sea of Cortez is unique. It's not the traditional bonefish flats or the tarpon haunts that so many anglers travel to enjoy. The Sea of Cortez is where memories are made. It's not a place just to come and catch fish. 
It's a place to come and experience a nature in this sandy, Sonoran desert landscape, where the edge of that hot earth touches and lines this cool blue killing field. The fish here will penetrate your memories. You'll never forget them. I'm Greg Heister. I'll see you next time on Seasons on the Fly. Whether you're catching them or not, it is so, so amazing to watch the rooster fish and what it does and the way it eats and the way it uses that comb. And again, it's, it's another indication of how nature has designed this species in its own way to hunt its own way and to feed in its own way. And uh, it's just a crazy cool fish. What fly fishermen are gonna find in La Paz is that not only can you catch eight of the top 10 saltwater fly fish in one location, but you have a variety of other fish that are available to you every single day. And a fly fisherman, it's not gonna be unusual for a fly fisherman to catch five or six different species every single day on the fly. Where else in the world can you do that?